Dennison, and this is Rip It Up. On each episode, we pose a few questions about the issues that are impacting creatives around the world today. And I'm Kev Bamboo, and tonight we have with us Lucy Dowell, and we are talking about going back to the theatre, as well as them being our giveaway winner. Yes, congratulations, Lucy. So we had a giveaway, and welcome to the show, by the way. Thank you. Um, so... <laughs> As congratulations for winning our little contest giveaway, you get a signed copy of my book. Do I have it here, actually? Although, unless you're moving to Ireland, it's probably completely useless to you. But <laughs> it's useful for anyone who's moving to Ireland, um, but it will be signed. Uh, you get a lovely 8x10 print from Kev, the fantastic photographer that he is. Great. And this is even better. Juanita Ray, our previous guest, has donated a lovely piece of artwork as well. Oh, wow. I loved her podcast. Oh, I know. Like her artwork was absolutely beautiful. So, yeah. Uh, really good podcast, too. And as well as all those fantastic items, as well, Lucy, that you've also, you'll be planting five trees. And right. also, the giveaway received around 30 massive. 30 shares across social media. Um, so we'll be planting, we'll also be planting an extra 30 trees as well. So Excellent. No, that's really good news. Anything to do with nature, I'm all for it. So cool. Excellent. And I never win anything, so it's even better. <laughs> well, that was my question. So in, in life's goals and how, out of everything you've achieved, how does this rank? Oh, here. Up here? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's got to be. It's, <laughs> I I mean, don't know where the bar is, but it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be up there. So, uh, okay. Well, I guess start, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're into gardening and watching birds. Is that right? Well, recently with the COVID lockdown, I've had to adopt my hobbies. I'm big into my health and fitness and the gym. Um, so I've had to tweak that a little bit by walking and it's amazing what you can see when you're out and about and you actually stop and pause for a second. And so I invested in two pairs of binoculars. Um, and I now have a subscription to the RSPB and I'm on my little tick list of birds to look out for around the world and country. So, yeah, it's been quite an eye opener. It's been quite nice, actually, and peaceful. What's the, sorry, what's the RSPB? So it's the uh, Bird Society. Okay. Is this so, so it's, the, it's the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. So it's mm -hmm. the UK's, okay. I don't know what the, the American version might be. Uh, the American, American version is probably uh, how many birds can you hunt this week, I guess, probably would be the <laughs> yeah, American it's version. like a treasure hunt for birds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. amazing if you spot a robin, you know, with a darker breast or a redder breast, how exciting it actually is. But, uh, and listen to different choruses in the morning. It's quite a and one of my little games with the dog in the morning. What can we hear this morning? So oh, that's cool. That's probably, yeah, that's probably fun to do, though. Uh, you're right. It would get you out into nature and actually paying attention more to what's going on in nature. It does. It makes you pause for a second, which is nice. And you also have a passion for theater and musicals. Is that right? I do. Yes. Yeah. One of my big passions. So anything that can evoke emotion in a song or music or uh, a sound or just some, somebody that can translate something from a stage to an audience for me is amazing. Um, whether that makes you laugh, cry. You know, it's uh, angry. It's um, it's just very, very poignant to me that you can, you know, translate that kind of emotion when you're trying to reenact a real life situation. It's quite a quite a talent. Yeah, a I think like for a, to do on a stage. Yeah, to yeah, to be honest, I think for a, for a viewer, it's a massive it's a mm. massive draw. Obviously, that if you're going to the theatre, you want to feel that emotion. You want to believe that character, and I think yeah. When theatre gets it right, it's one of the best places to be. I mean, I don't know about yourself, Milo, you know, in terms yeah. of theatre acting when, or when, you, when you're viewing as well. Like, it's one of the most kind of emotive experiences, I'd say, because you're really there with, mm. you know, you're really there with the actors, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, I have, if, if it's a good performance, I have a much more of an emotional reaction to it than say watching a movie or something like that, even mm -hmm. though a movie has like, you know, the music and all that kind of stuff, because yeah, it's, you're, they're right there. And I know what goes into creating a performance. And so mm -hmm. if they're able to get that out of you, it's, it's absolutely much more moving to me. I think. Well, I think just the talent, you have sort of one crack at it when you've got a live audience. So yeah. if you get it wrong, it can affect the whole experience for that person. Um, yeah. There's, so there's yeah, definitely a little bit, pressure. there's definitely a little bit more pressure. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. That's, uh... Yeah. 
no amount of pra- you know rehearsals and things is when it comes and, down yeah, to it. And you're in the moment with it as well. I think you 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 feel part of that experience. And sometimes it's it's pure escapism. And I think escapism can be really good sometimes as well, whether it's happy or sometimes people want to experience lower emotions. Um, but majority of the time, it's it evokes a happy emotion, which is nice. You are you here in London? Uh, I'm in the Midlands. East oh, Midlands, okay. Derbyshire. East Midlands was okay. So you a bit of ways because uh, yeah, I mean London. This is a city for theatre. Absolutely, yeah. I can't <laughs> wait to get back to the West End. Definitely, so. yeah, totally. <laughs> so yeah, we actually thinking about obviously the theatre and and things like that, um, and especially from a, a more public perception because you being our giveaway winner and not being you know an actual actor but we tend to put out a little you know public response survey because we like to include the public in, in what we're talking about and see what their thoughts are so we asked the public just a really simple question and it was basically like have you ever had dreams of appearing on stage as as a theatre actor and we kind of had a little few comments on it and some people were like yes absolutely like the west end is my heart and then we got no not at all no like People Ugh. were just like, no, not not in not Where's interested in Don't yeah, not not interested in theatre <laughs> theatre at all. Um, and then you got kind of like, I really love the idea of being um, an actor. So a lot of people really would have loved to. So obviously, different things in your life get in the way, and you can't mm-hmm. always kind of pursue those dreams. And then you got usual kind of things. You get people making kind of comments like, oh, oh, so you think I'm common, huh? You know, so obviously they know about the theatre, but then they're like, oh, you think that I, what, I was going to be an actor? It's like, so, yeah, there's just a few there. Um, we'll probably come back to a little bit more later because we've still got that running and we might have a few more comments come in as we go along as well. So, so according, uh, you've changed your career from when you were much younger to now. Is that right? Yeah. So I, my background was health and fitness and I've sort of had a, a, a strange navigation into HR Um but lots of experiences along the way. So, but it's, it's nice to have a change as well sometimes. Sometimes that's forced. There's a lot of people out there now, especially because of the pandemic, that have had to look at changing what they do for a living, especially I could imagine in theatre, um, people have had to look at changing what they do moving forward, for a sh- even if a short period, quite so, difficult to do. So, sorry, did you, did you say you do HR now? I do, yes. Yeah. Okay. What instigated the change? Um, I've always been a people person and I had the courage to um, qualify for my CIPD, which is the uh, equivalent, what you would do, you know, an exam for um, human resources, um, sort of degree level, and graduated from that into the role that I'm doing now. So I was very fortunate to get a role quite quickly, um, but it comes quite naturally to me. I'm quite a people person and can empathise and yeah, it just I think a lot of the roles that I've done over the years have sort of navigated towards that end goal. So I could see that a lot of the experiences that I have had have been quite a pivotal moment within those um, changes. So they're all for the greater good. Have you been able to do that remotely with the lockdown or did you have to go? Yeah, in? some of it. Um, some of it I've had to be sort of field based and on the road. But the majority of the time it's been yeah from home, which is really good and, and very grateful as well. When I think HR, I think the person that's either responsible for dealing with like firing, hiring, <laughs> or reprimanding. <laughs> I don't do, yeah. Um, we have this whole team. So there's a, a lot of people that have a, a role in those kind of things. But yeah, thankfully, I'm kind of at the bottom of the level. So <laughs> maybe I might work into those roles. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not the, it's not the Alan Sugar or whoever no, the US unfortunately not, fan, no. you know. Um, (laughs) but but talking to things kind of like career and er, like earlier life as well like kind of looking up a few things just um that says that you once applied to do several voiceover roles for the little mermaid is that right i did yeah (laughs) oh okay the movie or well it was a um a local production of the little mermaid so not the official um, it's one of my all-time favourite Disney films. I'm quite a big Disney fan. Um, anything stage and you know, music, anything that's got music in is a is a big passion of mine. So uh, that came upon um, an off a job offer somewhere as a casting. So off I went and yeah, so I did quite I had to put on an American accent, which didn't go down great. Not as good as yours, Milo. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Reasonably convincing with my American that accent. The reason why I didn't quite get it, but uh, mm. it was a good experience. Uh, on a side note, I took my first voice lesson yesterday 
to do a British accent. No way. Oh, so, on, so, got to so I'm going to, got to do it. Well, I could, well, take a guess. That's the thing. We didn't really do a whole lot in regards to getting an accent. It was mostly around like getting your, your mouth to work right. Because you notice when I speak, I, I kind of come up here. It's almost comes out, you know, it almost comes out your upper, your nose in a say, and whereas okay. like a, a British accent, it's kind of down here a little bit more. Okay. Like so a, your tongue, yeah and, yeah, and for an American accent, we, the back of our tongue is often up for a lot of stuff. That's why we say, you know, the ahs like hat and cat and towards yeah. with, with yeah. your, yeah, when you guys do the ahs, it's like caught and stuff because the tongue is down here. Oh, wow, well, okay. Um, it's so, exactly. So we were learning that yesterday. I, I suppose that probably, I know, I know obviously like accents change, like cause obviously in the States, you've got like kind of more buttery tones from like the South and things like that. And then mm -hmm. it is a little bit more kind of like nasal the further like north that you go. Yeah. But it's weird because obviously in the UK, there's a, it's such a small country. There's a massive chunk of accents. Mm. But it's, it's strange that you say what you say because that's probably why we have got like a slightly more dulcet sounding voice, you know, a tone, if you know what I mean, yeah, than, Amer yeah. than Americans. Is, if we generalised, like yep. the accent is slightly, it's like a step down, isn't it? So how would you say, would you like a cup of tea? Uh, with my American accent or my <laughs> British accent? Your new English accent. My new English accent. Trying to squeeze this one out of you. Yeah. <clears throat> I got to do the tongue. Would, <laughs> would you like a cup of tea? Would you like a cup of tea? Would you like oh, a cup of tea? Yeah, I only, I've only had one lesson, just so we're clear. That's not bad. <laughs> and I, we haven't really started in a lot of that stuff. I was once in Mexico and got compared to um, Harry Potter, Mary Poppins, and one other, which I can't remember, but it was very much... Oh, hello, Harry Potter. Would you like a cup of tea? It's like that sounds really cockney, and I'm not a cockney. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, when, but when I'm in like when I'm in other countries, like a lot of people tend to say that I've got a posh voice or posh, and I really haven't. Like, mm. you know, it's it's totally not. And also, I where I live, no, you don't sound overly regional. I don't think I do either. So, but where, maybe but I do. Where I, where I live now, like the like a lot of the people there as well, they say like I live further north than where I'm from, but they they also are like, oh, you, you sound dead posh. And it's just like, I'm like, honestly, I am not posh. <laughs> it's like, clearly yeah. you haven't spent any time in England. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I did my fancy uh, British accent there. So um, how about you doing a audition for My Little Mermaid? Can you oh, wow. regale us with any of your Little Mermaid songs? Uh, oh my god, the songs. Goosey, yes. Oh wow. It's also I mean, your favorite I, movie. I can do a great rendition of um part of this world, but I'm not prepared to sing the whole thing. <laughs> so I will right. go on. Um we'll, can, we'll join in. We'll join in part of, yeah, one of the big one of the big parts of the um audition was the um daddy he's not a barbarian. So they think that Eric, the the guy that lives on the land, is a barbarian because he doesn't live in the sea. And so it was very much, Daddy, he's not a barbarian. <laughs> that's good. That is, that is, that is, that, that's better than I could ever do. Yeah, actually, that was very good. They should, okay. I can't believe they did not give you the part. I mean, very Californian, but... <laughs> yeah, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but it's, got that that's, it's got that kind of Disney, Disney element yeah, to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. You were robbed. Robbed, I say. <laughs> so robbed. I mean, the hair colour is probably not putting it, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe next time. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I think in terms of Disney, that's probably I've got an even more important question than, you know, Disney related questions. And okay. it's more around. So, Lucy, could you tell anything? This is a really serious question on Rip It Up. And we always ask this to our guests. Okay. And it is, what is your favourite cheese or even cheeses? Cheese. Okay. It's, it's a Pandora's box of questions. It's, Wowzers. It's... Okay. So, if well, first of all, my spirit animal is a, a mouse. So, uh, <laughs> that's a good start. <laughs> um, crikey. It's not, it's definitely not dairy triangles, which kind of got oh. me here. Yeah, oh. that was that was the one of the answers for the uh, giveaway, wasn't it? Giveaway, uh, yeah. Juanita's, Juanita's, was, yeah, cheese. Juanita's cheese, yeah, yeah. that's in, right. In, um, South, in, in South Sudan, I think it was, was uh, Dairy right. Cheese Triangles. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I listened well. Um, <laughs> I think it's definitely got to be something with a flavour, so uh, like a smoked cheese or, yeah, I think a smoked cheese would probably be my favourite. Well, kind of like, so, 
So right. apple wood, smoked apple wood or something like that? Yeah, or? definitely, yeah. Especially with um, some biscuits and caramelised onion chutney. and I mean, it's very seasonal for, for me. Christmas time, I like to get the, the wine out and the cheese and biscuits, but it's my all-time dessert. If I was going to go for a dessert, that would be my dessert. So or cheese board every time. Good choice yeah, with the maybe, smoked smoked cheese. I, I like this. I like smoked cheese uh, as well. Yeah. If I had a second, maybe something not so pokey, but maybe something with like a herb in, a nice borsin, maybe. I don't know if you've heard of borsin. <laughs> also, kind of like cheese, that'd be um, ru- like roulette, isn't it? I think, root, where yeah, it's kind like of like a, roulette, a, a yeah. wheel, you know, like a wheel, like a wheel of cream oh, yes. cheese, mm-hmm. and it's got yep. the. I think Castello also do one. I think that they do like a pineapple one as well. Like that. Oh, that's nice. I've tried that. Yeah, yeah I think that's really nice. Oh. Mm. Yeah, pineapple, pineapple cheese. No, what do you like with I mean, pineapple and cheese, cheese good, but... combos? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'd go pineapple and cheese. That seems weird, but... I go pineapple I... and cottage cheese, so that's... Okay. Yeah, I'm out there. Yeah, I reckon, <laughs> I reckon a softer cream cheese definitely works yeah. well with, with the pineapple. Like think. a savoury, sweet savoury. Okay. All right. All right. I'd try it. I'll try anything. What, no, what, UK che- what UK cheeses have you had, Milo? Because obviously cheddar is just like a, a standard yeah. staple. But so the problem, so the problem with most stores like the Sansberries and the Tesco's is you have five varieties of cheddar, um, and then maybe like two other options. So there's <laughs> not a huge variety to choose from unless you go to like you know a, a place that specializes in cheeses like so you know you could go down to harrods or whatever and visit their cheese section and get like a nice variety or something like that so you have to actually really but then, but then you've got to kind of take out a mortgage to you do yeah. you, you have to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cheeses are cheap <laughs> yeah um so it, it is much harder to find find cheeses here uh you definitely have to seek them out in more specialty stores well, our local Sainsbury's, we have a whole aisle dedicated to cheese. So we're clearly in the Midlands, it's pretty popular. Oh, wow. But if you go to, if you go to like... Kind you of have a nicer a Sainsbury's the, than I do. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the like, kind of like around the, U, around the UK, like a lot of the, um, there's, there's lots of like independent, like small cheese producers. And I think even like near where I'm from, like, so like in Derbyshire, there's, a, there's quite a few that do the, um, they do like a version of Stilton, which is like a creamy, creamy white Stilton. Um, which is really nice. And they often like whack a bit of fruit in there if you want it. But um, yeah, there's tons of lots of little ones. So it'd be really cool. I think for you, for yourself, Milo, depending on how much longer the, you're in the UK or whatever, but actually definitely seek out some of these kind of like farmer's markets and that are, you might get the odd one in London. Like I know down at like kind of like Bank and Borough Market and that area, you can pick up a few like select ones, but you'll definitely get them cheaper if you kind of like have a little have a little journey out of out of town and and, and hunt out some of the hunt oh, out find a museum that you can milk a cow at and then you can make your own cheese that was a trip of mine <laughs> so you a milked museum? a cow what? and made your yeah, own they cheese do. certain museums in the midlands you can milk a cow and you can make your own cheese wow that is a thing I t- I've, I've never heard that <laughs> are, you, do you, are you telling are you kind of are you having us on no, 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 I swear. Yeah, it was one of my favourite school trips. Maybe that's where my che- love of cheese came from. I don't know. <laughs> wow. I never heard of that before. Like, I, huh. where, it was like in the Midlands as well. So it wasn't like a Tadden Somerset Hall. cheese maker. Tadden Hall. Hmm. Yeah, it's good fun. I will. Uh, I don't know if I'll go that far, but I definitely <laughs> will try to seek out more cheese, especially now that London is opening up again and I can actually go places. I like uh, Harrods. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, Harris maybe not Harrods, but I can try, try to... Try to find some markets, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. I reckon a little wander around Borough Market or something would would yeah. be a good one. Just to, yeah. it'll be a little bit more. It's not that localized because Borough is more South London, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Well, they might bring some stuff in. Yeah, yeah. you can go and take a bit of a journey. Yeah. Well, An excuse to take the girlfriend for a you know a, she, a little trip out as well. She is much more of a cheese fanatic than I am. So if you ask that question to her, she would probably list off all of the cheeses that we've had since living here. I would do that too. <laughs> yeah. So she would be yeah, like, Milo, don't, don't, don't forget. So your, your girlfriend, your girlfriend knows what cheeses there are available yes. in the UK. You're more of a cheese it fan, aren't you? Obviously. Yeah. The, it's true. It's all about cheese. Maybe the next podcast should be a cheese off. <laughs> cheese, yeah. <laughs> you need to go we, off the cheeses. <laughs> we should. Yeah, I mean, we talk so much about cheese on this podcast, on this show, <laughs> that maybe we should actually. <laughs> all right. So let's stop talking about cheese. Stop talking about cheese. Yeah. And cheese move on. always. 
move on. Uh, so Kev, uh, survey questions. Yeah, uh, so we we just got a few more kind of comments coming through there, uh, basically along the same lines of the question. I've got somebody saying that, why why are you even asking this question? Okay. Do you, do you, did you, why did you feel the need to comment on that question? But um, that's, you know, we put this up for the... Sorry, the, the, sorry. the question of like, uh, have you ever thought about being in Yeah, theater? yeah. So it's, there's a, because we got quite a few comments in um, and yeah, it's the same same question, but they they basically just said, "Why would you ask that question?" Um, so then I, I don't know why they would need to feel the need to actually put in the effort to to, yeah. to comment on it, really. But okay, fair enough. As we say, you know, we leave it as for the public. Fair enough. Someone else has put that I am actually a theatre actor. What do you do? Tell us more. We'll have you on the show. Yeah, really. Um, absolutely. Bring that person yeah. on. Talk to us about being a theatre yeah. actor. Bring them on. I, I, I think potentially we have got someone lined up who is a, a writer and director of um, theatre in the future. So Excellent. that links quite that links quite well. And then yeah, so a few more kind of silly ones. I won't I won't mention those because they've got they do swears in there. So and our and our show is for all. Positive. Um, yeah, our shows for all people. So you know, even the kids, no censorship needed. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's kind of pretty much it. Other than the usual, so very similar to some of the others. Um, kind of like they really love the idea of it. Um, some people just really, really love the theatre, but they have never actually kind of like pursued pursued the idea of becoming like a stage actor. Got a few people saying, yeah, I've done several Amdram kind of performances and things like that. So. Yeah, so amateur dramatics in in the Ooh, UK is, okay. is kind of yeah so yeah. yeah so basically a lot of the kind of smaller <laughs> theatres around the UK. A lot of my so, friends have done that. It's really really cool stuff. Yeah, have you ever been in any? Um, of, Unfortunately, of those, not. So? But it's something that I've definitely considered. But it does take up a very large chunk of time. Um, so it's every evening, every weekend, and don't get me wrong, I'm not opposed to the dedication to what the guys do on stage but I think it's it's one of those things that has to be like a, an internal hobby and unfortunately at the moment my work life balance wouldn't command that but it's certainly something for the future it's uh, it's something for all ages as well and all abilities and you know you can be in the background you can be at the front of house you can you can have a, a part in everything you know even entertainment and refreshments it's um yeah it's, it's a big big quite a big deal out there but um yeah, something I've definitely thought about, and I'm quite excited about the thought of doing that maybe in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I interviewed a guy, and I want to say he was in his 60s and kind of had always dreamed and retired and was like, you know what? I'm going to finally do this and go out, went out and started auditioning for stuff and got cast in the first play right. that he auditioned for. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. You know, when they're looking for the right person, they're looking for the right person. You don't have to look like, you know, a certain person, so... Well, that was it. It was funny too, because he was talking on his getting stage directions, you know, they're giving, doing the blocking and they're like, okay, from here. And then you go to stage left and he's like, what stage left? <laughs> so yeah, they get the basic <laughs> yeah, yeah. stuff. Uh, okay. So for you, Lucy, then besides Ariel, if you could play any character <laughs> in a stage show, what would it be? Oh, wow. Um, I think it's going to have to be Eponine from Les Mis. Oh really? Ooh, that'd be... Yeah, really. She's a huge character in the entire show, and what she does for me, from the stage to the audience, is just phenomenal. From yeah, it's very like, powerful. Really. Well, powerful. she goes through quite yeah transformation as a character <laughs> as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a very um, it's a very I've dramatic I've character. I've seen the show a couple of times, but I've laughed and I've cried, and it's been a little, sometimes it's been the soundtrack. It can be the soundtrack of your life as well. You know, some of the songs she sings and the messages she tries to get through to, to the audience. And, and I definitely think people believe her as well when she's, you know, when she's conveying the uh, the acting. It's, yeah, quite powerful. Yeah, good choice. Good choice. Very, very good character. Yeah, certainly. It's definitely a very, like I say, very dramatic character. And they do, yeah. as Milo says, they go through a huge, huge transition throughout. Yeah. It's probably one of the most, I'd say, out of all the characters in, in that um, in Lame is is probably the most complex character of of them all. I, I, I'd say. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Others might. I mean, Joel Van goes through a bit of a <laughs> the mill. Yeah, yeah, he he does. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, that's I, mm. yeah. I, I just I just think she goes through the biggest biggest transition. Well, they all they all do because obviously it's centered I mean, around it's the revolution and soundtrack to my life. It's it's what something that I play constantly in the car, in the home, and it's um, and sing along to. Oh, I was going to say, what's one of your favorite? Yes. What's one of your favorite <laughs> tunes from? Oh, wow. um, from I mean, Bring Him Home by Alfie Bow is a massive. Well, when Alfie Bow was um, Jean Val was a huge, a huge hit. Um, that's Alfie Bow. He's a massive West End veteran, shall we say? Um, but I actually quite like Master of the House. Okay, it's the, it's the fun part of the the entire show. It's the one part that you go. So you sort of it starts here, and you know it's a it's happy, he escapes, it dips, and then you have a sadness and it's all a bit, ooh, and a bit low, and you kind of feel the emotion, but then all of a sudden it dips up and then you've got the master of the house in the, um, the pub landlord, and he's dancing around with his wife and the child. And I think it's a, a part of the show that just gives you that little lift you need before you have to go down again. So for me, it's quite a, a poignant part of the play. Um, so although I love absolutely every single soundtrack and I could relay them from start to finish, <laughs> which I'm not going to because it's taken an age, uh, but I think Master of the House was um, probably one of the biggest ups for me in the show because it was so much fun. Uh, and, they, and they come across as a real character, like a proper landlord. And I was quite lucky enough to, to see Matt Lucas play Master of the House. Uh, and I've also seen Sasha Baron Cohen do it as well. So oh, Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think that. How many times have you seen the show? I've seen it three times, and I'm oh. hoping. Yeah, well, it should be opening up here, coming yeah, back. Because talk, talking to Master of the House, it kind of it reminds me a little bit of, you know, in Oliver, when obviously they're all in the pub, and Nancy's yeah. there making a distraction. I can't remember the, the song, but it's like... Um, da, 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 da. How it goes. Um, yeah. And it's kind of... It, it reminds me of that in Les Mis as well. It's that kind of all, all that going on, and there's kind of like... It's right before a real low point as well, mm. um, which I think I remember in Oliver, yeah, because they're trying to obviously get get him out, aren't they? They're trying to get him... Um, push him yeah. away. I think with every sad story to a musical, there's always going to you've got to have that little bit of a lift. It's a it is a roller coaster of emotions, and that's what they try and convey to the audience. And quite often they do do that, and which is why people continue to go back. They want to see it over and over again. It's almost a bit of a torture because <laughs> I know exactly what point I'm going to cry at, what point I'm going to laugh at, but I still forget things. So every time I see it, I can see a different angle to the story. And the French Revolution was such a massive massive deal, so. And with different, you know, when you've, because obviously you've seen it, you know, live performances so many times as well, seeing different people play those roles and how they, yeah. how they put them across as well, because yes. that can make you There's have different feelings. As well. mm. And I was worried about, Matt Lucas did such a great job of Master of the House. I thought, oh, no one can beat him, you know. And then next time I saw it, I completely forgot that it was Matt Lucas because it was Master of the House and off he went into his character. So I think when you go into that character, you kind of disappear down a rabbit hole and, you are that person. So clearly the, the whole production of obviously have a, a very good standardization of what that master of the house is supposed to look like as opposed, you know, same as with the, with the other stage actors. So they rotate, but they have a standard and um, yeah, they all pick that standard and off they go. I'd love to see um, Sasha Baron Cohen doing, doing that. Cause I, mm-hmm. you know, I think he'd be amazing actually. Like it's just, yeah, it seems like a, seems like a real good fit actually for that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see him on t- but yeah, also, also talking that because obviously, yeah, you've seen Les Mis so many times. But also, so what would your opinion be of the um, the actual? You know, most people, if you say to them about Les Mis, they talk about the actual film adaptation. So mm-hmm. what would you, you know, the, the more recent one? I don't know when it was, like say ten, maybe ten years ago now, with obviously Russell Crowe and and all that jazz in there. Um, what would your opinion be of that? Because having seen, you know, the theatre performance what would your take be on the film adaptation you can't beat film sorry you can't beat theatre film can be very re-rehearsed and re-rehearsed and re-rehearsed so you know you can get that perfection for me it's all about the conveying the emotion on the stage from the stage to the audience and that whatever it doesn't matter what you're doing whether you're singing you're podcasting you're dancing how that audience perceive that performance is quite a big deal for me 
So you could watch a film over and over again. It's, it's probably slightly different to perhaps watching it in the theatre to, sorry, in the cinema to watching a film at home. You've got the big sound, you've got the surround, everything is magnified. Um, you're paying to watch a performance. And I think what they do on stage as a live performance to me is just phenomenal. It's just, it's, yeah, I, I don't, you're in the atmosphere. You you almost feel what they're, you feel the breath as they're singing. It's, it's that powerful sometimes. Okay, cool. Well, so now we kind of reach our segment, which is Mon and Milo's most favourite segments of the show. And this mm-hmm. is where we get to turn the tables because we've spent a little bit of time asking you a few questions. Mm-hmm. But this is now our mini feature called Ask an American. And you get a chance to pose a question to <laughs> Milo. Okay. Oh, and in case I didn't actually, I didn't do it there, but I mentally rolled my eyes, by the way, when you referred to it as my. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> saw it in my own mind. I saw it in my own mind too. Um... All right. Okay. okay. So, um, so you're from Seattle. So mm-hmm. if my question, so you're normally behind the mic. Mm-hmm. If you were sleepless in Seattle, would you call a radio show? Would I call a radio show? No. No, no. I've Why never not? in my life thought to myself, you know what? I need to call this radio show. No. Well, even if you was feeling like down, no. lonely, you know. Mm-mm. If I, I would be a guest on, I mean, if they were like, hey, special guest Milo Dennison, absolutely. Um, but in regards to no, like, hey, I'm a home alone sitting on my oh, fancy please. houseboat in Lake Washington uh, and uh, feeling lonely. I'm so I'm in gonna... a <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, definitely. Uh, oh, thank sorry, I, I, re- sorry. I reckon you might do if, if as, as part of the uh, call-in was that, you know, our most, the most convincing call-in would win like a kind of multi-pack box of cheese. I reckon you'd be there in a flash. <laughs> so I did once call into a show that, that you know, how they sometimes they'll, they'll play a clip of a song and they'll say like first caller to, you know, name this song or whatever, win something. So I did do that. And I, I remember the song was a Dire Straits song. And so I called him like, yeah, such and such by Dire Straits. And they're like, yeah, you're winning. I'm like, great. And then the prize was a CD, right? So I had to go down to the station to get my prize. And they just basically give you this box of shitty old CDs that had been given to them. And they're like, okay, pick your CD. And I don't even remember what the CD was because it was some super crappy CD. And I'm like, this is the best you have. Like, that's what I would get for winning. That was terrible. It's like a bar- bargain bucket single. you know, kind of consolation up. prize. It really was. It was awful. And I'm like, so I had to drive down here to pick out of a box of CDs oh, for my so prize. So you've had a bad experience with the radio station. So yes. I'll Okay. I've been spurned. I've been, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, uh, in our most recent episode of this, I turned it around onto Kev, and I'm going to do that again today. So, uh, ah, okay. <laughs> so I'm. Sh- I. What's up with the beanie caps? Because I know you have hair. Because you unintentionally didn't have your beanie cap on once when we before we started up a call. So I know you have hair. So what's up with the beanie caps? Because you always have one on. Because I am actually um, an artist. I am really the real artist called Badly Drawn Boy. <laughs> yeah, he's it's the real Banksy. Banksy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I recognise that. Yeah, but I'm Banksy with a double E rather than a Y on the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. I am an artist called um, Badly Drawn Boy. So you'll have to. You'll have to check. <laughs> well, you talk, you t- you're talking to him now. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. All right. Can I have your autograph? Unless you want to, do you want to press me on that? Do you want to press me on that any, anymore? Badly drawn, boy. I don't know how I would press you on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, sure. <laughs> to be honest, it was a perfect name to use because, you know, it's, it's a depiction of myself. Badly, badly drawn, boy. You know, if someone right. did a, a scrawly, rubbish sketch, they would probably draw a picture of me. <laughs> Could that should be your next challenge? Next oh, there we go. Next competition is like... Draw a picture. Yeah. Draw, oh, a, picture. Yep. draw a picture of the badly drawn bamboo. Yeah, that's a good one. Best. Am I into that? Yeah. <laughs> you may see you, me again. You, you'll be on the show <laughs> twice. <laughs> I think the prize would probably be that you'd get to keep your own drawing. Keep your own drawing. <laughs> and the prize this time around is <laughs> yeah, frame your own exactly, drawing. Yeah. Congratulations. I mean, I'm not sure if they want to sponsor it, but we'll give it a good go. 
we'll send you I some tape or something to pin it to the wall. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so, okay. So we kind of kind of wrap up. We've had that kind of question about, you know, did you have a, ever had dreams of appearing on stage? So I'm kind of going to go and throw that one back as we kind of close, close things up a little bit. So, yeah, so for you, Lucy, so did you ever have dreams of appearing on stage as a theatre actor? Um, I mean, when I was a child, I actually, one of my ambitions, so I had three, a professional skier, uh, an astronaut and a clown. Mm. Uh, and I remember <laughs> dad went saying to me that you will always achieve one of those. And I think it was the clown. Um, <laughs> I've always been like the dancing. What, singer. as a professional clown or just as yeah, a life? absolutely. Yeah, I actually dressed up as a clown or trapeze artist or something entertaining. Um, I've always had a passion for the stage and that kind of thing, but it just never happened for me. And I think if I could have a purge, I would definitely be one of those people that would sneak off and become a West End um, sensation. That would be probably one of my goals and life dreams. But, you know, it's never too late. And we've always got the uh, Amateur Dramatic Society when I'm 85. Um, and maybe I can play one of the older characters. But yeah, it's it's. I, I definitely would have loved to have done that. But I think it's. I think the the young theatre schools um, are fantastic. But my opportunity wasn't there at that time, and I would love to have uh, pursued something like that. But I, I just love the the thought of being able to evoke such emotion from a situation to an audience, um, from stage to an audience is just it, yeah, it's pretty much a phenomenal talent. So I'm, I, it impresses me every time I see it. No matter how many times I'll see Les Mis every time I'll have the same emotion and and everything else. No, cool. I, I kind of agree with that as well. So, but what about yourself, Milo, um, in terms of, have you, have you actually done any kind of stage stuff as well? Uh, yeah, I've performed in quite a few stage productions. Have cool. you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was cast in a stage production here that got canceled because of COVID. So the month that it was supposed to open was the first lockdown. Uh, I auditioned for a stage per thing this week, actually, uh, this last week, but I actually turned it down once I got a better idea of the script. Uh, they were, it was a bit too art house for me. Mm -hmm. um, it was what, was the, what was the role? It was, uh, I, I'm not fully sure that's part of the problem. Um, it can be quite confusing. Yeah. And uh, it was, yeah, it was a small, I, I'm not, I love, I don't mind, you know, small theater, big theater, doesn't matter. Um, but it just, it just wasn't, it just wasn't the right world for me. I just didn't feel comfortable with it. And I think they just would have been more well suited going with somebody that would, was more enthusiastic. I imagine you playing um, in Miss Saigon. Miss Saigon? I can't sing. No, you don't sing, just dance. <laughs> <laughs> Just dance around. Helicopter pilot. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I've lost my baby in Saigon. Yeah. I don't. I don't know any of the songs from Saigon. Yeah. Yeah. You could easily play the helicopter pilot. You know that'd be that'd be okay. Can you dance? Uh, no. Why? Well, unfortunately, not not uh, not well. How about okay, that? but you can act. I can act. Yes. Yeah. So I, act. I, I I'm I'm a decent stage actor. Um, and I'm not that great of a singer and I'm not that great of a dancer. So musicals, I've done one musical in my life and it was the only bad review I ever had. Maybe uh, Sweeney Todd would be a good one. You could be a barber. That work. Maybe that would work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the kind of like, by the way, I saw yeah. that the great some of the more, some of the more like, some of the more like vocal based. Yeah. Music. I know that's difficult, but you could, there hey, are, there if are Johnny Depp can do it, I can do it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, I can, I can sing and dance, but I think the problem is, is other people know that I can't. That's your response. So have you ever done any stage theatre, Kev, or wanted to do? No, no, not. I've, there's, there's things I probably would. I'd be confident enough to go ahead, but I've never actually auditioned for anything like that at all, to be fair. I just yeah. like... To the local probably, drama. Yeah. Probably should. Probably, you know, when things that come up, I probably should go for them. But no, I never have. Even though like, I do, do have a good interest in, you know, Theatre, musicals, you know, all of that. I'd, I'd quite happily, you know, go along and give it a give it a bash. But yeah, maybe I just should. Um, but don't know, don't know why I haven't actually. It's strange, huh? But, the worst thing that can happen is they'll cast somebody else. Exactly. Worst thing, yeah, they, they'll moment. just. <laughs> worst thing that'll happen is is they'll just say like they'll just drag me off and just be <laughs> like, don't you ever come here again? Yep. But no, um, no, I haven't. So. All right, well, that's fine. Uh, last question for you, Lucy. 
is what, since we're talking about stage, what will the next stage show or musical you will see now that things are actually opening back up? What's the first thing you're going to see when you can? Well, last year I saw A Thousand Splendid Sons, which was a really powerful local production about Afghanistan um, and the suppression um, on families that were there. But And I always said that it might be my next thing to see again because I loved it so much I missed so much of it um I think there's things that I could perhaps pick up on a second time round but I'm so desperate to see Les Mis that I've already again I've already got it earmarked yeah because again it's just one of those things that it just gives me it's my pick up it's it, yeah I've got to say you know once a once a year it's got to be it doesn't matter whether it's local or you know in the West End or the Broadway or wherever it may be uh, for me it's just the whole production. And I know that they put it so well together. Um, so, yeah, so I've kind of got a bit of a plan for my mother-in-law's birthday to be able to, she's absolutely equal. You've actually introduced me to Les Mis. Um, We have a bit of a, a long-standing funny story about that, which is, is sort of like an in-joke, but she introduced me to it. So it'd be nice to get a ticket to go back and see that. And um, my plans are for, well, I think the tickets go live in July. So watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's it's funny you talk about kind of obviously it's not just the kind of the people in, in front of the curtain as well. You know, like so Absolutely, many people, yeah. as, as well as as well as obviously all the actors. Oh, um, good. I so, mean, so many. Yeah, what I was going to kind of touch on is that like so many of those people have also been out of work, and a lot of yeah. those roles are very much part time as well. You know, they're just only required kind of during the shows or like, you know, at the box office and all those little parts that make the whole, you know, the yeah. whole nuts, nuts and bolts that come together that make the whole thing come. And, you know, all like the backstage, you know, crew. Well, you've got make... the orchestra, the toilet attendants, the refreshments, the, you know, the ticket masters, everything. Well, they, yeah, they, they, they make all those things run as smoothly as possible so that the actors can actually just concentrate on doing you know, putting their performance across because, you know, so I think we have, we have to kind of have massive kudos to all of those people and the fact that they're now getting a chance to come back and, and actually do what they know, love. Yeah, do their because job that, that they enjoy. do those jobs as a result of loving the theatre as well. So even the people that clean the, the chairs afterwards, you know, and pick up the litter and, you know, to clean the toilets, they probably have a passion for the theatre because they want to be in that environment. Yeah, kudos to those. Should we wrap it up? Yeah, I reckon so, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Lucy, for joining us. You were a fantastic guest. That was wonderful. Great. Yeah, thank you. I've enjoyed it. I took my mind off work today. <laughs> oh, well, glad we could help. <laughs> nice reflection. And when you do decide to audition for your first play and then become famous, you will be great at being interviewed on the talk shows. So you don't have to worry about that part. So you're I'll good. give you a call. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, and of course, to you, our audience, thanks for joining us here on Rip It Up. And we hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, cool. Cheers. Cheers.